Hi there, in this video I'm going to revisit my Kingfisher hide. Now if you're new to the channel or haven't dug back through my past catalogue, you won't have seen anything from my Kingfisher hide. Now fairly locally to where I live, um, there's a pond that uh, the owner has given me permission to set a hide up next to and a few years ago I got some amazing shots of the Kingfisher. Then it disappeared and it did come back briefly last year but it's been gone again all year but yesterday it let me know that it'd seen it again so I'm going to take you down today and I'm going to see if I can see the Kingfisher but I'm going to give you a guided tour anyway of the hide and I know that I'm really going to enjoy my photography. So this location is really handy for where I live. It's less than a five minute walk away from my house um, down this short track just here. And what's even better is the neighbor that owns it has given me access to the hide whenever I want to. What I'll do is I'll give you a little tour of the hide. Now down at the side of the hide, just where I'm walking now, I've put a plank of wood to just make sure that I don't sink into the bank because it can get quite muddy just down here. And then on the edge of the pond, just where I'm walking now, underneath, I don't know whether you can see, but there is a long strip of metal to act as a kind of bridge so I don't sink into the mud at the bottom of the pond which is quite important because this pond can get quite claggy and um, quite um, quite muddy now this is the front of the hide so you can see where the camera pokes through this netting um, and then when i've finished at the end of the session there is a piece of black plastic that comes down over the front to protect the front of the hide from weather and then I just tie it down with these pieces of string in the corner and then that keeps it nice and weatherproof. Now also just out here are where all the perches are where hopefully the kingfisher will land and to make sure that I can get to those perches to alter them or just add to them then if you look down here in the water, um, there are some posts sticking up and they mark the edge of another piece of metal that is underneath the water. And so I know I can walk out into the pond quite far um, and alter these um, perches just here if I need to. So this helps me to almost seem like I'm walking on water, but because I know that those pieces of metal are actually on the bottom of the pond, I know that I'm completely um, safe um, to walk out into the water without sinking and I barely even get my feet wet, but it's really important to know they're there. So what you also might notice is where the bottom of this plastic comes to is about where the decking is within the hide. And so what I did about a year and a half ago is I lifted the hide out of the pond because this pond does flood and the level comes up quite a lot during the winter. And I found that there were times when I couldn't use the hide at all because it was full of water. So there is another video that I'll link down below showing how I lifted the hide out of the pond and put it onto stilts. The hide itself is built from this corrugated arch um, and I first used it to film some owlets um, that was in a nest box very close to here. Um, and then when the owlets disappeared and the kingfisher showed up, we moved this archway to this current position. And at the time it was on the side of the riverbank and it was at an angle. And as I mentioned in the introduction, um, I did lift it onto this platform. So now when I'm inside the hide, it's completely level 
and completely dry because what I also did in that process is I covered the entire hide with plastic that keeps it completely waterproof and the floor um, has not taken any wear at all. In about a year and a half, it still is as good as when I put it down. As with any wildlife photography, it's important to be comfortable because it can be a very long waiting process. I'm absolutely not guaranteed to see anything today. It's the first day that I've been down for a long while. Um, and so we may not see anything today. It may not see anything for several days. Um, if the kingfisher has only just been sighted again, it might take a while for this to become a regular place that it visits. So who knows, I can probably sit here for about another hour and just see what we see. I've already seen a moorhen um, and some mallards on the, the pond, but what I really want to see is the kingfisher. So no sightings today of the kingfisher. All I've seen are lots of mallard, um, some moorhens and the odd pigeon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack up for today and come back down another day when I've got a little bit more time and I can sit here a bit longer. moment it's day three I came down yesterday and I spent about two hours in the hide now I didn't film it because I thought it might be more beneficial just sitting quietly uh, and seeing if I saw the kingfisher now I did get a quick sighting the kingfisher did fly over the top of the pond um, and I distinctly heard it I heard it before I saw it but I got a quick flash of the kingfisher so I know that it's definitely about so that's at least two confirmed sightings in the last week so all that's left now is to just sit and wait and see if it does show up today Waiting, I'm going to air one of my pet peeves. I've now spent about four hours waiting in the hide for a sighting of the kingfisher. Now I do know it's about um, and so it's not completely in vain but I do find that some people, especially judges of camera competitions, don't fully appreciate the amount of time that goes in to wildlife photography. You'll look at a photograph of a kingfisher and think, wow, that's amazing. But some people just think that it's from a paid hide where you've um, just gone along and almost given you 30 pounds over and got a free photograph of a kingfisher. And that is absolutely not the case, certainly for me, because I had all of the time expenditure building the hide and then at least four hours at the moment without even a photograph um, so I don't know when I will actually even see the, the kingfisher and so for somebody to say well that's just a kingfisher on a stick that really does annoy me and I'm sure there's people out there who feel the same way. That's the end of day three. I've sat in the hide today for about an hour and a half. So over the last three days, I've totaled about five hours sitting in the hide. And I've had that very brief sighting yesterday when the kingfisher flew over the pond, um, but I didn't get any photographs. Now, if you've got to this part of the video, then you can expect to see a kingfisher by the end because I'm not going to release the video unless I do have a photograph to put somewhere in the video. So stay tuned because something will happen. But today I did get a photograph of a juvenile moorhen. So I'll put that on the screen now. This is day four and I'm into my sixth hour now waiting for a sighting of the kingfisher. Um, today is quite 
dull and it's drizzling with rain so the light's not as good but um, I've got to keep coming to the hide just in case I get a sighting so let's see what happens I hope the microphone's picking up the rain on the top. It's been about two and a half hours that I've been sat in the hide and no great sightings of any bird life today. Perhaps the rain um, affected them slightly and they were sheltering. Um, but when the rain did ease off, um, some mallards did make a brief appearance at the other side of the pond. And I did get a few shots of a wren. Um, one fairly close, but it was slightly behind some leaves, so it may not be absolutely brilliant. Um, so that's it for today and I think I'm going to leave it there. So you'll notice I'm not in the hide anymore, I'm back at home and what I have been doing is editing the video as I've been going along and I've now got more than enough to make up a video but unfortunately I've not seen the Kingfisher. Now I'm going to go back and keep revisiting the hide and hopefully I will see the Kingfisher before too long and that might appear in another video but for today I'm going to call this video done. And now I did promise that I would put in some photographs of kingfishers. So what I've done is I've gone through my back catalog and found some of my favorite shots that I've taken from the hide of the kingfishers. And I'm gonna show you those in a few seconds. But before I leave, I wanna tell you about a new channel that I've just started. If you're interested in cycling, then go and check that out. Um, what I wanna try and do is chart my progress to getting fitter. And I've just ordered a new e bike so if that interests you pop over there i'll leave a link down below in the description um, and it will really do me a big favor if you can leave me a like and subscribe as well so here are those shots of those kingfishers So this video was really all about patience and how in wildlife photography you can spend a long while sitting waiting for something to happen and still you don't get the shot that you want. I did get some nice shots of the mallard and the wren but no shots of the kingfisher. So that's going to take a little bit more perseverance and revisiting the hide. Um, so if anything does happen, I'll let you know and maybe even make a video about it. Well, if you have enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments. Now at this point in the video, I normally say nip over to my Instagram and leave me a comment there. Now my Instagram is still going to be running, but I am going to be concentrating more on Vero. So that's still at the Oakton Photography, but on Vero instead, it's just much easier to upload photographs so you can leave me your comments there now also if you want to support the channel and help to make me make future content like this you can also visit my teespring store there i've got a range of merchandise on offer so go and check that out um, there's lots of new designs there and it really helps out the channel but you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel you can do that simply by clicking like subscribe and the bell notifications because that really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content Content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>